Hello! So today we are in the Black Square Caravan, the analogue caravan in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to have a play with doing an approach into an airfield using ILS. So I've got, already got the nav radio tuned in to the ILS frequency, I've already got the course programmed in but we're going to have some fun with the weather. So we've got a clear sky at the moment in Flight Simulator we've got clear skies set but what we're going to do is go and click on this cloud we're going to pull the base down to the ground and you'll see at the moment on a clear sky all it really does is makes the clouds have zero coverage we're going to do that <laughs> and we're now going to have some fun so we can't see anything anymore and if we get inside the aircraft we've got no GPS either yeah but we have got the um, the nav radio is tuned into the ILS frequency 108.50 so the distance measuring equipment is doing its job the autopilot is on it's flying us on heading mode flying about 25 degrees and we have an altitude of 3200 feet the ground level of the airfield is 1200 feet so we have 2000 feet over the ground okay so we are flying away from the airfield we are still above, we're fl even though we are flying away from the airfield, we are still above the glide slope. Here comes the glide slope. So we're about to pass through the altitude at which we should be at this distance from the airfield. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do before we even think about turning around is slow down. And we're going to get the aeroplane trimmed down. So this is going to be a bit of an explanation of what we are seeing on these instruments on the way in. Okay, so we are now below the glide slope, so we are now lower than we need to be. The reason you come in from below the glide slope normally when we turn back around is in order to capture it if we were using approach mode, you have to approach the glide slope from underneath it. You can't descend into the glide slope with approach mode but even though we're not going to use approach mode also it gives us more time to talk before we start descending so I'm going to spin us round on the heading and get us facing the same direction as the airfield again so we're looking for 205 degrees so the aeroplane is turning left see on the attitude indicator we're in a bank can't see anything outside we're in that pea soup fog which is really useful but great for our example now you can see we're probably going to turn too tightly so what we'll do instead of turning right the way to the runway direction we'll fly out at this angle yes yeah, so the airplane is straightening up and it's going to come back to 240 degrees so we're going to intercept the angle of the runway. Here we're going to start dropping the flaps. We're right on the limit of the flaps at the moment, but obviously once we drop them, the amount of power won't hold us at 120 knots. We will actually slow down, which is good. You can see the glide slope has started to move, and the uh, course deviation indicator has started to slide in so we're almost on the runway direction, we're going to overshoot slightly so we're slightly off to the right of the center line now okay and just the act of it straightening up has put us pretty much dead on and the glide slope is coming in as well so I'm going to come off the autopilot I'm going to cut the throttle a little bit more and we'll start explaining things on the way down, so I'm going to start descending I'm descending too fast, look, so we're falling below the glide slope. We're still seven miles out. So if I were to pull the nose up, we go through the glide slope and we're now above the glide slope. So you can see how you could chase the glide slope. We're now pushing the nose down, coming back towards it, go to about five degrees, and we're not quite there. So it's somewhere in between. So you kind of have to fish around now notice while we're doing this we're drifting off to the left so we'll come back 
slightly across our path of, or to, across the path of the runway. We can't see anything outside yet. So we're just kind of trying to find the, the direction to go because you can't see a crosswind indicated anywhere in a, in, a, in a manual aircraft. You know, the the airliners get all kinds of clever tricks with being able to see the wind direction. We don't get that. So we're just straightening up, we're fiddling with the elevators a bit to try and get us back on the glide slope. We're now at four and a half miles out. We're doing 110 knots, so I'm going to cut the throttle. I'm going to go for more flaps. That's going to affect our vertical speed. That's going to push us higher above the glide slope. But I'm really using those flaps to control our speed more than anything. Okay, so we're slightly off to the right, so we'll turn left. We're falling below the glide slope, so we'll pull up gently. Straighten up. There's no need to go mad on chasing the needles. We're a bit low. Now, we know the ground's at 1,200 feet, so we're now 800 feet above the ground. We're off to the left of the runway. Yeah? I'm, I will admit, I'm, I'm we weaving around a little bit on purpose. So you get to see this. We're getting too slow. So it is a juggling act. There's no getting away from it. It is a juggling act. So there we go. We're coming down onto the correct direction and the correct glide slope position. We're just going above it again. Look, as we picked up speed, we gained lift. So it is a juggling act. We're now off to the right. We should, before too long, if we just go across. We're way too high now. We're getting close to the ground. That's why the needles are moving around so rapidly. But we're not going to panic. And we can look out and we get to a decision height. If we don't see the ground before too long, we'll have to give up on this. We're off to the left, so we'll fly slightly right, and there's the runway. So you, normally you would get to a decision height of a couple of hundred feet, and if you can't see anything, you would go around, or you would divert to a completely different airfield. But the main thing to do is, as you get closer, the needles will move faster. So the main thing is just not to panic. And we're down. So I always find these exercises are really good just to keep your hand in at kind of reading instruments, trusting the instruments, and forming the picture in your head of where you are in, you know, reading the instruments, interpreting what they're saying, and forming a picture in your head of where you are in the sky in relation to the runway. Obviously, as you get closer, the needles move a lot faster. So, I mean, it's more difficult to actually talk your way through it while you're doing it than to just do it. Obviously, if you've got all of your concentration on doing it, you can do it a lot more accurately. Actually talking your way through it and explaining things is more difficult, strangely. That's why you tend to see people going extremely quiet when they're focusing all of their attention. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover this evening. So we're down in one piece, in this pea soup fog that we artificially created. But it's a really good exercise to do in the simulator. And try to resist using approach mode and everything. So once you're kind of in the ballpark with the runway, turn everything off. Fly the instruments by hand. It's really good practice. Okay, anyway, I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you again soon.